So I was working on this UI for a game that I'm making, and I decided to make this cool typewriter effect. Then I thought that other people might also want to make a typewriter effect similar to this, so in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to do that. So in a new game here, I'm just going to make a basic UI. So let's go start to UI, screen UI, and let's put a frame in there. We're just going to make this a basic button, so let's go 0, 0, and then can make this take up a whole screen for now and then we're just going to make it small like this we'll add a ui constraint so that's exactly the right width that we want and it is 0 or 1.78 and we can put this in the middle by doing 0 0.5 0 0.5 over there and then our anchor point also needs to be 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 just like that okay so we're going to make, we will want this to be a button, but I'm going to use a text label. Uh, obviously, you can use a button, it will be the exact same. But usually, when I'm creating a button, I'll put a button and a text label on the same frame. So, I'll show you how I usually do this. It just gives you a slight bit more uh, customization. So, Let's put the anchor point and then we can change the size to be 1, 1 and then we'll change this to 0 just like that and then we can change the position to be 0.5 and 0.5. Now let's change the actual text itself. So let's change the color of the text. I'm just going to make it completely white. I'm going to turn text scaled on. I'm going to, we can leave it centered and let's change the background to be transparent. And then for the, in the actual frame, we'll change the background of this to be like a gray. Let's do 25 dark gray. And then, so how I usually do a button is I'll create a frame, then I'll put a text button in it. I'll make the background transparent. I'll make the text transparent. And then I will set the size to be the same as the frame behind it. So just like that. Then we can change the anchor point to be 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and the same with the position. Just like that. So now we have a button and I will usually name this hitbox. Just like that. And now we can name the text label, whatever we want. I'm just going to keep it as text label and the frame we can rename to a button. Now I'm going to create a local script inside of the screen GUI. I'll do a local button so that we can define the button, which is script.parent. And then the local button hitbox, button.hitbox. Um, oh, sorry, the button is script.parent.button and then this will be button.hitbox and then we can make it do something when we click on the button. So how do we do that? We'll take the button hitbox um, and we'll do dot mouse button one click, uh, mouse button one click just like that and then connect function and this will essentially allow us to run a function once we click on the button okay so now for the actual typewriter effect i like to make a module script just so that it's easier to use and so that it's neater and in our local script let's get our module script before we continue so we can do local uh type writer equals let's change our module script to uh, type writer effect and then we'll do typewriter equals require and uh, script dot parent no sorry script dot typewriter because we put the typewriter effect in the script. Obviously this could be in replicated storage and then instead of here, you'll just do a game dot replicated storage. Obviously if you're gonna have multiple scripts, but we just have this one script for now and only one button. Also this button looks pretty bad. I'm going to just add a, um, 
UI corner to the button just so it looks slightly better. Okay, so in our module script, I'm going to rename the module to typewriter, uh, typewriter, just like that, and we'll return typewriter. So now we're returning the module. Okay, so in the module, we're going to create a function. So we'll do um, function, and now let's get our typewriter here. So typewriter, colon, and then I'll do write, so that it writes out what we're going to type, pretty much. And then this is a function, so we need the open and close brackets. And then we'll get the uh, text label. We're going to get the text to type. We're going to get the speed to type and call back. So now we can press enter and it will automatically make us an end at the end of our function. Okay, so what is callback and why do we have this here? Well, essentially what we can do is we can do uh, if callback and then, then and then when you press space, it's going to create an enter and then call back with the open and close brackets. What that will do, right, is we can actually add a callback function in our local script when we run it. And that will allow us to enter a function when the script is done. So for example, if we have our typewriter and then our callback function will just be print completed, then once our typewriter effect is completed, then the callback will print completed. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you later on in the video. Uh, I'll add an example in the local script so you understand how that works, but that's pretty much what callback is. So now let's work backwards. So we've got speed. So we can do uh, speed equals speed, or we can do 0 0.05. So this will allow us to optionally add a speed, or if there is no speed in our local script, then it will default to 0 0.05. Next, let's clear the text label. So we'll do a text label and then dot text equals, and then just quotation marks. That's not quotation marks, that's quotation marks. This will essentially make it so that our text is equal to nothing. So it's the equivalent of going here and clearing this so that's equal to nothing. Next, we're going to make a coroutine, coroutine, just like that, dot wrap. And what's a coroutine, you might ask? Well. A coroutine allows us to run a script without interrupting the rest of the script. So if you want to think of a coroutine, you can think about it as something that's running separately from our script. So normally when code runs in Roblox, it executes it line by line. So it will execute this line, then it will execute this line, then this line, this line, etc. right? However, if you put a wait in front of a line, then it will wait before completing everything else. So let's see if we put a wait here. Now it will complete this sign, complete this sign, wait, complete this sign, complete this one, etc. Right? However, if you have a coroutine and you let's put a function in here just like that, it will create an end. And now if we put wait in here, then it will do this sign, this sign, this sign, etc. Then this sign and it won't wait before continuing to this line, this line. So that's pretty much how a coroutine works. So why would I use a coroutine here? Well, if you have a longer script, say you have other functions in this typewriter effect, say you have different functions, say this wasn't typewriter and this was still module and you have a bunch of modules in this one script, then you can allow your script to run other modules while this is running. Okay, so now the actual typewriter effect. We're gonna do this inside of our coroutine because we already have our function here and it's end. So we're going to do for i, i is index. So that's the amount that the for loop has run for. And then we're gonna equals one. So i our index is gonna equal one to start off to hashtag text. So it's going to start out at one and it's going to go for however many letters is in text. And then we're going to write do to close off our for loop. So now it creates an end for us. Inside of our for loop, we're going to do a text label. 
dot text equals and then we're going to do a uh, string dot sub and we're going to put text and then comma one comma i so this is going to create our text with the value one and our index okay so what is the value one though so value one is how much it's subtracting from i i is obviously going to be the index so every time it loops through this for loop until it gets the text amount it's going to be one number above so for example if we have um this and then instead of i it's going to be like two and then it's going to be three so say our initial text is hello world this is going to be h e and then obviously the three is going to be h e l for hello so it's just going to keep going on like that for the entire for loop then we need to wait for however long our speed is. So we're just gonna do task.wait and then we can put in our speed. Okay, so now we have done this, we can now go back to our local script. This should be the whole script for our module. Okay, so back in our local script, when we click the button, we can go typewriter and then colon write because that is our function that we have set here. Uh, typewriter right okay then it needs our text label so that's going to be a uh, button no uh, button dot text label right and then after our text label we need the text that we want to do so let's do a uh, button clicked and then the last value that we need is the time so we're going to do 0 0.25. Now let's try it. We're going to press play and we're going to click the button. Okay. That did not seem to work. Okay. So I looked back on the video and I realized why it doesn't work. It's because our coroutine wrap doesn't actually start. So all we need to do is just add an open and close bracket at the end of our end here. Now, if we press play, then we have text. And when we click on this, it will do a typewriter effect, just like that. Okay, let's make this a bit faster. So let's do 0 0.7. Let's try it now. Okay, that was slower. That's my bad. I meant to do 0 0.07. There we go. And now if we click on it, there we go. It's a lot faster. Okay, now, as I said at the beginning, I promised you that I'd show you how callback works. So let's go back in our script and we're going to add another value after this and this will be our callback value. So we're just gonna write function and we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna automatically add an end for us just like that. And then we're just gonna write print and done typing. And then we can try that, okay. So now if we open our console and we press play, it will say done typing. But obviously because we're using a coroutine, it will print this out before it's completed. So what we could do about that is we're going to take this callback and we're going to put this in our coroutine, just like this. Now, when we press this, then it's going to type done typing after we have clicked the button and after it's done typing. And that's about it for the video. If you guys did enjoy, you can consider liking, subscribing and leaving a comment on what your favorite part of your video was.